Welcome to the chest cam and the cabina tour. So as you can see, I live in a wooden cabina and it's on a concrete slab. This was already here when we got here and it's a beautiful little spot. It's small, but I am so content. It gets the job done. There's no running water in the cabina and there's no gutter system as you can see. So my high tech solution was put some trash cans. So these collect rainwater that comes right off of the tin roof. And yeah, it works out pretty well. I don't need too much water because it's just me, me, myself, and I. But yeah, so here's the front. Here's the entrance. I've got my aura pendulum nest that fell out of a tree from the farm I used to live at. This is a really nifty... Uh, I don't even know. It's, it's, a cal it's a calabasa squash that, so this is a fruit that grows on a tree and it's really hard. And what you can do is when you harvest it, I think basically you have to harvest it when it's not totally ripe. I could be mistaken though, but you can carve it and then paint it. And this is from an indigenous cacao farm, uh, not too far away from the farm. And it's beautiful. So this is my, these are my decorations. And here we've got the concrete slab extends kind of like this all along the cabina, which is really nice. It's a easy area to walk on and I can also store stuff. So I usually keep my tools out here. But all right, without further ado, la cabina. Like I said, simple, simple but sweet. So we've got three rooms. We've got bedroom here. This is the main room, houses the kitchen and all my junk. So I kind of use this corner here to store more tools, stuff for farming. And I use the rest of this ledge here to store some stuff as well. And then here I've got like my vlogging equipment, as you can see, some more farm inputs. Uh, everything was here for the most part, except for this table here, which I bought. But all right, before we continue with this tour, I gotta make myself a cup of joe. Now this stovetop used to be down at the main house where my brother lives. It's a funny one. Only these two burners work, but that's okay. I don't really use this much for cooking, except for the oven. I'm a big fan of using the oven to cook, get some baked veggies. So here we've got a nifty cast iron that was also left on the farm, which is a huge, huge find. So that's really nice. And then now we got our coffee brewing. All right, so we got the main house. Here I've got some nice shelving where I've got some beans and lentils some flour, got my spices. Down here is more amendments for the garden, some sugar, all sorts of goodies. This table is already here along with this fabric, which I love, really cool. So this is where I just got like my notebooks, pens, pencils, all sorts of junk, yeah. And a beautiful picture from my niece, Alana. Look at this work of art. If anyone wants to take a guess at what this represents, I'd love to hear. And then this chair, probably the highlight of the whole farm, some expert carpentry. Check that out. She is just about completely broken. There's these thin little planks of wood <laughs> that are all snapping. Uh, I will admit I added the, the pillow, one of my few additions to this cabina. And then, yeah, I already talked about this. Looking good. Up here, I'm just starting to collect a bunch of, of glass bottles and jars because there's nothing more valuable around here than some storage materials. The glass goes a long way. It's like you can see here, I love using it to store the beans. And I'll also use it to store seeds and inputs that I make for the farm. And then over here, we've got the bedroom where the magic happens. So lovely little bed. This was at the main house. We moved it up here. That was a fun one. Uh, the, the truck almost fell into the jungle when we were trying to get up here that was good but this guy right here check this out so this was here when i got here and i guess is it was like the the bed box whatever you call that where you put your mattress on the box spring but no springs involved here just planks of wood and i actually slept on that for a couple weeks so i would just put a yoga mat on top and then have sleep in my sleeping bag and that, that worked out well enough and then here we've got all my clothes i really need some furniture here there's these shelves that were here, so I could work on setting these up. 
that would, that would probably be smart, but for right now, everything's just on the floor. Keep it simple. And, and that's about all there is to it. So over here, we've got the bathroom, which really doesn't get used. I use a compost toilet, and then I shower down at the main house. So this is currently not operational, no running water, like I said, but one day she'll be up and running. Cute little thing, yeah. And that's really all there is to it. But now we can make our way to the back here. So here I've got the fridge set up outside because it kind of leaks water, so better outside than inside, I'd say. And this works out well right here. I got another thing to catch water. And here I got my trusty washer, also came from the main house, brought it up here. This is a neat one, so you just load your clothes in here. Look, I got another batch ready to go. You put water in, you get it going, it spins about 15 minutes, good to go. And then you put it in here, and it does a little centrifuge dry so things aren't so wet when you hang them up to sun dry. Here I've got a bunch of junk. So this is where I put my trash from my little trash can that I have in the kitchen, accumulated there. Since I've been here, I've only used three trash bags. An entire trash bag though is just from junk that was out at the cabina here. This garden used to be covered by a whole bamboo structure and there was bioplastic on top. So they had it kind of like sealed in. So you didn't have to worry about having too much rain. But that was falling apart, so I took it all down, and all that plastic went into here. And then, yeah, here, look, I guess we're just, now we're looking at the other side, too. Why not? Got some cacao drying here. And then here's all of the rest of the junk from, from that setup where they had the plastic. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Maybe some of it can get repurposed, but for now it's all sitting here. And here's my trusty water tank. So this is where I store water when all of the stuff in the front gets filled up. And then I pull from here when I'm watering the garden and whatnot. Here you can see all these tree branches from when I pruned the trees up here on this back slope. This all get cleaned up soon enough. And that's about all there is to it. So life is good here at the cabina. It's nice and simple. There's not too much to worry about, not too much to keep under control. Uh, but things will get improved for sure. That'll be a fun, fun set of content is just finding ways to make the cabina a bit more homely. Homely, is that a word? A bit more homey. I don't think that sounds any better, but, uh, but a bit more comfortable. So yeah, who knows what we'll do. I don't really have too many ideas right now. My focus has just been on the gardens, but soon enough, I'll start thinking of things to do, building furniture maybe. And there you go. That's the tour. So that's where I live, home base. And now we'll do some garden tours. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the little cabina house tour. I almost want to reshoot it, but I got to let go of this perfectionist mentality and we're just going to let it ride. So, so now we're going to do the garden tour. So I'm starting here. Uh, I'll show you around. Starting at the bottom of the cabina here. So this is the road that leads down to the rest of the farm and to where my brother lives. I like to think that basically my farm starts kind of like here. Honestly, maybe a little bit further because, so we'll actually do a little bit of a walk. Okay, so like I said in the intro, I've got 18 acres here in my brother and I's farm. And uh, he's kind of managing the majority of it, sort of. So, so there's the lowlands where the, so at the start of the property, that's where we've got these really big gardens that were already built. And so he's planting in those. He's got a head start on me and a lot more space, but he's also got a whole family leaf to feed. Um, yeah, and then you start just climbing up the mountain and then eventually you get to the cabina. And then that's like kind of the, the last checkpoint before the, the mountain and the, and the primary jungle. But so you make your way up this pretty cool steep road that I'm currently walking down. And eventually you get to this bend in the road. So we're gonna turn you around again. So you get to this bend in the road here, and this is kind of where, where Finca Caruna starts. So here we have the entrance to what I call the banana slope. I'll do a tour of this eventually, but I gotta clean it up first. So you walk through here and then going up the slope, up to the cabina, look at that light flare there is a bunch of bananas planted. Uh, they're all like really tall bananas. They look pretty cool. I've actually got to check to see if we've got any racks to harvest there. I'm, uh, 
I'm, I'm hungering for some bananas. I haven't had a racket produced in the farm for a little bit. There's some really tall, regular bananas. Then there's red bananas. Those are really sweet. I actually planted some in the Cabina Garden. So, so yeah, you make your way up this road. First time I walked up here, I, first of all, it was a different world. It looked very different than it does now, but I was so enamored from the get-go. So you just feel like you're in a different world. Like the lowland farm has a very different feel to it. It's very beautiful. But here just feels like, I mean, look at that. You've just got the whole jungle behind you. There's just something special about this place. So this is what I call the slope garden. And I say that because at least back there, there's a slope going down from the cabina. Here it's kind of flat. Now this whole area when, when I got here was completely overgrown. You couldn't even see this. So what happened was this used to be cleared. People that lived here in the past did grow some stuff here. Someone at some point planted some yucca here. And what happened was it's unmanaged is it'll grow up and then it'll fall down eventually. And then that branch will all root and then new ones will come up. This whole entire thing was like covered in wild yucca. It looks like it could have been like covered in food, but really it was mostly just, just shoot growth, just stuff above the ground. So there was that. And then there was a bunch of what I call the hummingbird tree. So you can see one right there. That's uh, not focused, but yeah, we'll zoom in. So that is a hummingbird tree. All of these things here, those are all hummingbird trees. And I, that's just a name I've given them because they produce these cool little red flowers, which we'll see in a bit when I zoom in or get closer. And the hummingbirds love them. They're like small little cylindrical flowers. I guess it's perfect for the little hummingbird tongue. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. So, so they were everywhere when I got here. They're, they, they weren't planted, so they just show up on their own. They're really good at colonizing uh, disturbed land. So if you ruin a patch of land, if you take out the forest, those guys will come in pretty quick and they grow really fast and really, really prolifically. But, but basically this entire area was under canopy with the yucca and with those trees and also with the soda caballos, which I pruned, which are big trees that were right on the ridge before the cabina. So those, you can prune them. They're the same ones that are the reason why I have all of the branches behind the cabina that need to get cleaned up. But you can chop them and they grow back. So you can see like these beds here are all bordered by branches and those are all from the soda caballo. So here we've got a couple of beds in the entrance way. And these big plants you can see here, this is Mexican sunflower that I actually found from the side of the road, not too far from the farm. This is another cool plant that you can chop and it grows back and you can stick it in the ground and then it regrows. And this plant, what's really neat about this is that when you chop this, and when this plant material is fresh, it has as much nitrogen content allegedly as chicken poop, which means it's a wonderful fertilizer for the farm. So you can feed your plants with plants. That's the way to go. So the goal is to eventually have all of the food for the garden produced on the farm. And this is going to be a big part of that. They're also beautiful and they produce really, really pretty yellow leaves. Uh, so they're sunflowers. It's like little mini sunflowers and they produce, a, or I said leaves. Yeah, flowers. Sorry. So yeah, they're just starting from little cuttings. This is actually one plant here from that little branch there. And, and it's just incredible how well they grow. And these have only been in the ground for a couple months. And they were small little plants. Now here I've got some squash. So the first planting I did was mostly just squash and beans and a few other things, but I kept it really simple. I needed stuff that was gonna grow quickly because I knew I was gonna go back to the States to visit the family. So I wanted things that I'd be able to put in the ground and take care of for a couple weeks before I left. And here we've got some okra. So okra does really well in, in tropical hot climates. And I have three planted here, which will eventually have to get thin to just one. These can grow three meters tall, so 10 feet. Here we've got a garden bed, a circle around a guanabana tree. So these were planted. There's one here, there's another one there, and then there's another one ooh, over here. So it was really fun designing this garden because I had no idea what it was going to look like, but 
I kind of started with the idea that I need to preserve this tree and kind of like accent her and, and do something pretty around her. So I did this circle bed and then things started to start to flow, you know, because there was a gap right there that made sense for the entrance way. And maybe I'll try and lock the exposure here so it doesn't keep on. Yeah, there we go. So there was like a gap here that made sense to have as an entrance. And then there was a gap over here that made sense to have as an entrance. So I was like, okay, these are going to connect. But then we're going to wrap around this tree in the circle bed. And then it became obvious that this could be a whole section over here. And then over here where there's a bunch of beans planted in a rectangle, this is where Chico said he grew beans. So that was a no brainer for me. I might as well just go ahead and do that too, just for the first season at least. So there we go, another bed. And then I realized that this whole slope here was kind of, kind of good looking for a garden. So yeah, it all just kind of came together and, and it wasn't really thought out. Uh, preemptively at least, which is a really fun part about about trying to farm in a not necessarily super efficient way, but in an aesthetic way that works with the land. So trying to read the land and let it talk to you and figure out what your design is going to look like as you adapt to that. So I could have made this just a bunch of rows to be really efficient, but I don't think it would have looked that good. And I'd rather lose some production, like lose some space that I could be growing in to, to make things flow and kind of give that experience of of being part of nature and working with nature. It makes it a lot more enjoyable and inspiring, I think. So yeah, that was kind of a little bit of the process of how I ended up developing this. And so here on this slope here, I've got a bunch of circles that I put where I kind of collected topsoil to have some, some little pockets of fertility. And there I planted some specialty crops. So here's more okra, here's a peanut. They look kind of strange. You see how, oh yeah, it's refocus. How the leaves are kind of curled up like that. I, I still don't know what's going on, but but I've seen flowers on her. So I think that she's going to produce some peanuts. If she could just give me one peanut, that'd be great. <laughs> then I can regrow her. More squash, more okra. Like I said, I kept it pretty simple with uh, with what I was planting. But we'll have a lot more diversity in the future. And here's a cucumber that's going crazy. So she's just vining all over the place. As you can see here, I built, I built trellises with uh, soda caballo branches. I lashed them at the top with some rope, which is a really cool thing. So I'm really into the whole idea of building without nails and hammers. So it's incredible what you can do with, with just rope, with using the tension of rope or fiber because I can also get fiber from the jungle. So eventually once I learn how to find that and collect it and process it, I can, I can get closer to using just stuff from the farm to, to build and, and create my lifestyle here. And then, so in between everything, I just sowed black beans from the store. Got a bunch of chaya growing, tree spinach, super nutritious. One where you can just take a branch and stick it in the ground and it regrows. And this will be a staple of the diet. So it's got cyanide in the leaves, but you can boil that off pretty easily. It's got a pretty neutral taste. And it's really good with garlic. Check this out. This is Tithonia rotundifolia, or annual Mexican sunflower. Look at that pretty girl. So she's starting to bud. <coughs> Should have a whole bunch of red flowers soon. She just opened up today, this morning. They're incredible. The hue is just so vibrant. It's crazy. <coughs> All right, guys, I have to take a pause on my garden tour because I got attacked by a coffin fit. Something stuck in my throat. So we're gonna get back to it. I'm gonna go right back into the slope garden here. Uh, it's a little bit later in the day, so the sunlight might might reduce the quality of the video here or improve it. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I gotta I gotta move quick because it's getting hot and I gotta get back to working on the garden. So I just reposition the camera a little bit. Yeah, so I wanna start back up here. Uh, I can't even remember what I was talking about last. I think it was about this chaya here. So tree spinach, super nutritious, get the cyanide out and then you're good to go. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this already. Oh man, I'm gonna be doing double time with the content, but 
Okay, so this is a cucumber that's just really prolifically growing. And look, we got a kook right there. Hello, cucumber. Yeah, so these are Boston pickling cucumbers. They're supposed to be good to pickle. Go figure. So that should be fun. Get some vinegar going and then yeah, have some cucumbers, some, uh, some pickles. And then here I've also got a squash at the bottom that's just running along here. Really neat. So yeah, more okra. These ones are the best looking okra that I've got. They're pretty big. And look at those leaves, they're huge. I'm a big fan of the big leaves. It's so fun to look at, but yeah, I gotta start thinking about <clears throat> thinning these out because only one's gonna fit. Like I said over there, these get three meters tall and they'll be really big. And as you can see here, this one's shading out the one below her, but cool for now. Uh, the idea here is, so in a lot of areas, I planted more things than I intended to, to keep there. And the idea is the more roots in the ground, the better off we are because nothing builds soil as well as living roots. So people talk about how you can't have too many plants in the same spot because they'll compete for nutrition. I think in some cases that can be the case, but <clears throat> I think more often than not, you're better off with, with higher density and higher diversity. So generally speaking, the more photosynthesis we have, the more green leaves that are taking the sunlight and converting it into sugar, that means the more sugar is also getting pumped through their roots into the soil, which means the more microbes and little, little dudes living in the soil that there's going to be. And those microbes, that's what it's all about. It's all about building the soil. So once you have a really robust microbial population in the soil, they're going to access all of the nutrition in the soil and give it to the plants. They're going to form a symbiotic relationship. There's going to be a little give take. Everyone's going to come out better for it. And, and they're going to access all of the nutrition in this clay and give it to all these plants. So the more life we can have in the soil, the better off these plants are going to be, generally speaking. So I'm not afraid of having too many plants in the same spot. I want as much green as possible. I want to really build this soil. But uh, a couple more points. So in this one here, I've got a bunch of flowers growing in the canopy, in the uh, under canopy here. And I'm really excited to see what ends up surviving. I just broadcasted a whole mix of seeds. So we'll see what, what likes it here. <clears throat> the idea here is that I really want to have a lot of flowers here. It's kind of like the center focal point of the garden. So I want this to be really pretty. I've got a couple of regular sunflowers growing here as well. Look at that, getting close to opening up. That's super exciting. Really stoked for the sunflowers. Here's another annual Mexican sunflower. Look at that. She's pretty close to having a red flower of her own. And then back here, so I didn't actually initially expect to have this much of a garden over here, but again, like I'm saying, I was just working with the land and it became more apparent as time went on that like this is a good spot and I can kind of make my border work so that I've got a little area to grow. So I've got another chaya here. This one's growing pretty well. And then here is my banana pit. So the idea here is this will eventually be a meter deep. Once I find the time and get to it, I'll dig this deeper. And this will be like a compost hole. I'll put all sorts of organic material, I'll put veg scraps in here, and that'll turn into soil and nutrition. And that's gonna feed these three bananas that I've planted. So here we've got, uh, these are, this is a red banana and that's a red banana as well. So they produce a rack of bananas that are red. They look the same in the inside. They're supposed to be pretty sweet, I believe. I've never actually tried one myself. We have red bananas on the farm. These just came from the banana slope down over yonder, but none of them have any racks on them with bananas yet. And this one is from the lowlands where my brother lives. So this is a short, stout banana that gets like not even too tall at all. Maybe it'll be about this high and it produces prolifically. It gets huge racks of bananas. Got some more squash over here that will hopefully be able to run wherever I'd like. And, and yeah, that's about it. So I think I already covered this slope garden in the first part. Uh, if not, I'll just quickly do a little bit now and then I can just cut it out if I already did it. But we've got more okra. There's some red okra here. These have red okra pods, but once you cook them, they also look green, just like the regular ones, but they'll be really pretty when they come off the plant. And this is neat, because this is supposed to be red okra, but it's got a green stem instead, so go figure. 
And then here you can see the difference between regular okra and then the red okra, very different leaves. It's got the red stem. Oh, another one, another red okra with a green stem. I don't know what gives there. I'm not sure why that's the case. Got some holy basil in here. The most incredible smell, really medicinal. And then lining this in the back here, which is delineated by the rocks, is a turmeric and ginger bed. Really excited. I think this will look super pretty when those all come up, but none of them have poked their heads out quite yet. Ground cherry, which I'm really excited about because we only had two seeds of this and only one of them survived. And here she is and she's starting to produce fruit. So looks like her lineage will live on. Her grandchildren will be here as well. And then we got another squash that's starting to run all the way over here, which is really cool. Climbing up the tree. I love to see the squash just start vining all over the place. I think it's so neat. I'm trying to get her to be a little bit more better positioned to wrap around. Yeah, there we go. Here I've got some peppers. And then we've got yucca here. This is supposed to be a four month variety. Usually it takes anywhere from six to 18 months for it to be harvestable. But allegedly these are ready in four, but we'll see. And then here I've got sweet potato. So this is going to be like a ground cover that will eventually hopefully cover all of this space where there's leaves. And this is neat because when I looked online to figure out how to propagate sweet potato, it was kind of a process. People would have you like basically find a way to root the sweet potato, putting it in water and a little bit of soil. And then these slips grow, these little plants start growing from it. And then you cut those off and put them in water and then they root and then you put them in the ground, which is a whole bunch of nonsense. It was supposed to take like six or like eight weeks for that whole process to finish as well. And that's just a bit too much of a time investment. I put them in the ground like right before I, or wanted to, to plant them right before I left to, to visit the, my parents in the States. So I didn't have that kind of time. So instead I saw someone saying you can just half bury them and then they, they might work out. And, and they sure did work out. So there's one, two, three, four, and it looks like that's it. <clears throat> yeah, but so these will be a really cool ground cover. And you can also eat the leaves. This is another green that I can enjoy and it's basically perennial because these will just keep on growing back uh, they'll, they'll root as they go along the ground here as they fall to the ground and then they'll produce sweet potatoes but i don't even have to harvest them to get something out of it i can just take clippings of the leaves which will then regrow and use that for a nice farm salad <clears throat> but yeah that's about it for the slope garden this place should look really nice in a few weeks when things start to really grow out a bit more and all of these flowers start to produce flowers. And there's some more flowers worked in here, but none of them seem to be doing as well as the, as well as the annual Mexican sunflowers. So this might be a staple in my gardens. And they got really pretty red flowers. This is a cosmos here, but again, just like not so happy. Not everything loves, loves this spot or how I planted it. So it's very much a learning process. We're gonna figure out what works. <clears throat> And, and what requires the least maintenance. So I could come here with a list of things that I wanna grow and do whatever I need to do to make it work. Maybe that means putting chemicals on to keep bugs away or doing this or that. But it's way easier if you just work with nature and let her tell you what's what. So I can see what grows well here. I can keep building the soil. As the soil fertility improves, new things will be able to grow probably, things that might not work now. But in the meantime, I can just focus on what works. So what grows, grows. and. And that's where planting in a lot of density and diversity comes in handy. Because if I put a bunch of different kinds of plants and a lot of them, some stuff won't love it. Some stuff won't be happy here, but some stuff will be. And as I collect seeds from those plants, things will get more and more acclimated to this garden here, to this lifestyle in the cabina with me. And things will get easier and easier over time is the idea. But all right, so now we're moving on to the main garden. Do a little pan around. So here's bed number one, the first bed I ever made. <clears throat> I've got beans on the border here. So I kind of separated the garden with stones into a little border garden and then the main one in there. So I got beans growing here, all black beans from the store. They're climbing up these branches I put in. So that's looking, that's looking pretty neat. And these look really healthy. The beans do great in this climate. They never wilt. I've never seen a bean plant wilt yet, even when it's super hot. They've got beautiful looking leaves. They're looking almost kind of waxy, which is a great sign of health. And they're gonna be putting nitrogen into the soil, which means everyone wins, everyone benefits. So 
Beans will also be a big part of my gardens. And then here we've got mostly flowers, but a few other things as well. So a lot of sunflowers and check her out. She's finally opening up. That'll be beautiful when she's all spread out. Oh, look, Jerry, he's back on the sunflower. So Jerry has been on the sunflower for three days and he's just recently been named and added to the family. And I don't know what he's doing there. I thought he was gone because this morning I couldn't see him. But it looks like he was just picking a new new leaf to chill on. Um, but I don't know what he's doing because he doesn't seem to be eating the plant. And he's been there for three days. So like you got to get hungry and thirsty, right? But maybe, just maybe, Jerry is a guardian protector taking care of this sunflower and keeping the grasshoppers away. I don't know. But uh, very glad to have him. Oh, he looks like he's mobile. What are you doing, Jerry? What a neat little guy. <laughs> so yeah, the family is expanding. We've got all these sunflowers. They're getting pretty close to, to having beautiful little flower heads. <clears throat> now in here, we've got two holy basils that are doing really well. Yeah. I can't get enough of that smell. It's so good. I can't wait to make some teas out of those. We have a cosmos growing pretty decent here. Let's get a better look. So there's a cosmos. Now in the middle here, we've got Moringa, the tree of life. So this is another cool one. When it gets mature, you can take a branch off and stick it in the ground and it'll root. Now she's not growing all that well, and I'm not sure what she needs. So I gotta look into that, but she will eventually be a huge tree that has leaves kind of like this, but just bigger. And you can just take them off really easily. And they're super nutritious. Moringa powder, hopefully you've heard of. It's a great supplement for nutrition. And I've got two more here. So those will put in, get put in the ground eventually. This is one as well, but this is from the top of a, of a branch. I don't think it was thick enough. It didn't root. But so yeah, there's the bed number one. I'm not sure what this flower is. I gotta, I gotta look it up in my notes. But she's a pretty one too. And they seem to be doing pretty well here. I got an eggplant, one of the few that's still alive. I planted a bunch, but they didn't seem to love life here. Got a pepper here. And look at this. It's a really cool looking herb. I forget what it's called, but it's getting attacked by leaf miners a lot. You can see like the white on the leaves as they get and chewed up. So we'll see how she does. And then we've got the Hugo Coulter, my pride and joy. A lot of work to put this together. This goes all the way down a foot deep. And then it's about a foot and a half tall. So got about two and a half feet of amended soil here. So I dug down, I started layering all sorts of organic material. There's a bunch of logs at the bottom of the trench that I dug. More logs situated throughout, a bunch of bamboo, a bunch of greens, all sorts of stuff in here. So in about a year, two years, this will be some of the best soil I have on the whole farm. This is gonna turn into humus rich, really chocolatey soil. At least that's the idea. And it's gonna hold moisture super well. So it shouldn't really need much watering at all. And the main focus here is a few crops I've put in little, little circles of fertility. And then the rest is just beans that I sowed here. I scattered thousands, not thousands. I scattered like a good 100 or 200 seeds. And then I thinned them out when they got too big. And there's a bunch still left in here. You can see them trellising up the branches. But the specialty crops here that I'm really looking forward to is we have a butternut squash here. She's producing some fruit. Very exciting. And then we've got a zucchini. This is a different kind of squash. It might be a yellow squash. Another butternut. And they've got all this room to play here. I want them to just take this over if they can. If they feel so inclined. Another annual Mexican sunflower about to open up. Come on, focus. There we go. And another one. These ones are growing really well. So I think, I think I'm gonna be planting a lot of these because they have a good amount of foliage. They shade the soil, they look pretty and they grow well. Keep it easy. Some more squash here, another zucchini. They have a little bit of room to sprawl here. 
another okra in there. I have Mexican sunflower in the center here. This is like a keyhole design. So there's, the bed goes around this bamboo with a little bit of clearance. And in that clearance, I put Mexican sunflower. Here's another sunflower. It's got a bunch of ants on her. And yeah, that's the garden tour. And then so we're going to be building a garden here, which has been a lot of the content recently. We're we'll building another garden behind the root garden, which is going to cover up the rest behind that slope. I've also got plans to build a garden on the side here. I kind of started before I went back to the States, but haven't done anything since I got back. And two bananas. This is another short one. And there's another banana that's planted there, but <clears throat> it had a little baby pup coming out when I planted it, but that pup died and I haven't seen any signs of life yet. But hopefully she sprouts up eventually once she gets acclimated in there. I hope she's not rotten and dead. But this will be a bed. It doesn't get much light, so it'll probably be some really low light stuff. I'm not sure what that'll be. And then in the center here could also be a bed, but we'll see. Got some wood here. Now that wood, the plan is to use it for another set of Hugo Coulters. So mounds of organic material, logs and clippings of plants, green plants and all sorts of stuff, leaves. And so there'll be one here in between these two soda caballos and then another one in between those two soda caballos. So like that. And that'll be a lot of growing space, growing space, growing space. There we go. That gets a lot of sun. So we're still a little early in the day. It's not getting hit yet, but eventually it will. And it gets about five hours for each of them, maybe five and a half, which is about as good as it gets in these gardens here. So those are going to be wonderful spots for food and flowers. And yeah, that's the main plan for now. That's the the near future-ish kind of stuff that I'll be working on. And then also eventually the whole back slope. So back here on the slope that leads up to the jungle where you can see that water tank, that is also some prime time growing space. So that used to be all under canopy of a couple more soda caballos that you're gonna see the remnants of now. So yeah, here they all are. This whole area that gets great sun later in the day. So I want all of this to be like a garden that I'd probably terrace or something. So kind of make little like ledges with wood and then backfill it with soil. So it's a little bit flatter and that should be really, really neat. And I think that's going to be it for the gardens. I'm sure I'll find places to expand in the future, but I feel like with all of those gardens I've just talked about and shown you, I should hopefully be able to grow enough food for myself with a little bit to spare. So that's the thought. And if that doesn't work out, then there's more space in the lowland farm. My brother lives, but I might be able to commandeer if I ask nicely, and then I'll be able to get all the food I need. So we'll be self-sufficient on the food front. And then later on in the channel, I'll talk about other areas of self-sufficiency. So with energy and water, um, I'm thinking of adding a water feature at some point, a pond somewhere. But we'll see, all stuff for the future. Right now the focus is the gardens and food. And the other realm of self-sufficiency, I guess would be money in a sense, because there's some things I'm just gonna have to pay for, like if I want health insurance, or if I want to, to have uh, phone service, cell service. So in those areas, I'm hoping that YouTube can provide. So if you'd like, subscribe, like, get on the Patreon, um, but yeah, so that's the idea. And then there's other things I'm also thinking about business-wise with maybe selling medicinals or uh, inputs for farming, but all of that has to, has to happen in, in a respectful way with regards to, to the land that I'm living on. I really want to avoid, if possible, extracting from the land more than I think that I should to sell off the farm to other people. It doesn't sit right with me. As much as I can, I want to keep stuff on the farm. But if I have so much of an abundance that I'm only taking away, let's say 10%, then that would feel okay. And that way then I can spread the, the nutrition and the organic value of this farm to other people, which is great. I especially want to focus on the local community, just the street that I live on and the area around here. Um, 
But again, yeah, if possible, that has to be only when I have enough of an abundance where I feel like I'm giving enough back to the land. Because that's the only truly way, true way to be sustainable, right? But, uh, but yeah, those are my musings to cap off the, the garden tour. And I hope you enjoyed it. And now it's time to get to work. So I'm going to head over to the main garden, set up a no talking video and, and get back to working on that garden extension. So uh, yeah, let's grow more food. Cheers. Mm -hmm.